All right, the second season of Tamron Hall begins this week, and you can watch new episodes weekday afternoons at 3 o'clock right here on 13 Wham ABC. And we are joined now by the host of the show, the one, the only Tamron Hall, joining us here live. Uh, where are you from, Tamron? Are you in New York? Are you in L.A.? I am in New York. I'm in the heart of New York City, just about a block away from Central Park. Um, we just returned to our studio this week for the first time since March, if you can believe that. And it's yeah. been surreal in so many ways. It's um, like the Twilight Zone, but we're here, we're back in season two. And like you in Rochester and so many people just trying to move forward, just inch ahead one day at a time. Yeah, I know. It has got to feel good to be back in the studio, though. This is really our second home. Tamron, I was reading your bio and, and talking about the upcoming season, and I couldn't even believe my eyes. I had to read it twice to see that you're celebrating your 50th birthday this week. I, I'm yes. like, I'm calling fake news. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> Listen, I am turning 50 on Wednesday. My team has quite a surprise plan for me. I, at first I said, I don't want any surprises, but I said, let me, you know, let me let go and let them take over. So they have uh, some birthday surprises planned for me. It's interesting to celebrate you know, your 50th birthday uh, and not be able to be around all of my friends and my family. But guess what? My biggest friends and family are all watching mm -hmm. from home, the TAM fam. So we're going to celebrate and have a good time. I said, you know, I'm going to count it as 49 plus one, Chris, until I can have a big party in person where you can come down from Rochester and we all hang out. Yes. But in the meantime, we'll be here on Wednesday. I don't know what 50 year olds do. I guess I'll turn it up, but that's what we'll do. <laughs> hey, you can set the tone. It is your birthday party. I can't wait to see what the show has in store as far as surprises go to, to celebrate remotely, if you will. Uh, Tamron, before we get into your yeah. show, because you have so many incredible guests lined up for next week, I want to ask you, what is the one thing you think that you've learned now heading into 49 plus one uh, that you would tell, oh. what would your 50 year old self tell maybe your 40 year old self, some lessons that you've learned over the past decade that we here at home can take with us too? You know, I think it's you're not alone. I mean, that so often, especially, you know, in my childhood, in my 20s, um, you know, when you're struggling or when you're going through some tough times, you feel that, oh gosh, it is just me. I, I you know, I've lost jobs before. I've been up, I've been down. And you can isolate yourself and believe that, ah, it's just me. But the more you open up, the more vulnerable you allow yourself to be. Even when we're trained, my dad was in the army. I was trained to be tough, you mm -hmm. know? But if you allow yourself to be vulnerable, the, the warmth and the love that people are ready to pour inside you and to lift you up on those down days, it's there. And that's something that I try to take to the show as well. Listen, there won't always be an answer for every problem, but many times, there's someone, and it can be you know, a mentor, it can be some, a colleague, you just never know where that source is going to come from of someone who's just, who's rooting for you, honestly, and you may not even realize it. Yeah, you're never alone, I like that. You know, you mentioned that you've lost jobs before, yeah. a job before, you know, so many people are going through that right now. And not just a hopeless. job, I've lost many jobs before. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I've lost many jobs before. Right, and we see you, and of course, I, my backup plan, success. you know? Yeah, yeah, no, we, we look at you and think, oh, you've made it, this is your sixth, I mean, this is your second season, you won a daytime Emmy, you've probably never been knocked down, but there are a lot of people right now who feel knocked down because they've lost their jobs. They, uh, you know, coronavirus, obviously, mm -hmm. the pandemic, so many people have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really good advice that you're not alone and, uh, you know, to pick yourself back up again. And you've done it so beautifully. Absolutely. Yeah. So is any stress about going into a second season to kind of do it better than the first now that you're heading into your sophomore year? You know, it, I think it's, it's not a stress as much as it is a welcome opportunity. You know, I'm going to get some things wrong. I'm going to get a lot right. I hope a lot right. <laughs> but at the end of the day, what do we tell ourselves? You just have to do your best. I happen to have a television show. But, you know, when I was in school, my parents said, listen, all you can do is your best. As I said, I was raised by dad who was in the military. My mom was a teacher. And for me, the best of what I can bring to this show, to your station, to our conversation, Chris, is just myself. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna tell my son who's 16 months old, you just be yourself. And that's um, the spirit of, of what we do every day. Yeah, absolutely. And Tamron, one of your first guests is Andrew Gillum, a former gubernatorial candidate for Florida. 
What was the decision making that went into having him as your premier guest for the kickoff on Monday? And, and why did you want Andrew to be the first person and his wife that you sit down with? You know, it wasn't by a plan. You know, we had a list of guests that we wanted to hear from. So much of our show is about the conversation. You know, we talk about life and you we mentioned, you know, what's the model for life or, or um, how you get through tough things like losing a job. We can all put on filters, you know, life, the Instagram offers what, 30 filters. So we can look different, feel different in a picture, but what is your life really like? And I reached out to Andrew Gillum and his wife, this rising political star. He was on his way to be the first black governor of the state of Florida. I lost it within a sliver. And then it all came to a screeching halt in a hotel room in Miami in this scandalous way. How did you get there? What happened? What? Who are you? And that's the spirit of our show. And when he said he was willing and ready to answer those questions, I knew that it would be a compelling story. I mean, here we live in New York. We know, we've seen scandals involving governors mm -hmm. and all over. I mean, we've covered it as journalists. Mm -hmm. And people often want to know, how did that happen? Especially when your name is followed before or after rising star. Mm -hmm. So he comes back down to earth, so to speak, to talk to us. And I thought that it was a compelling way to kick off a season, which is really, we're talking to the people that you're talking about, right. and we're talking about the things that you yourself are discussing at home. Well, I can't wait to watch 3 o'clock on Monday when the season kicks off. Tamron, two things. Happy birthday. Congratulations on a new season. You, I can't wait. And uh, my floor director, <laughs> Alan, I think is your biggest fan, and he's too nervous and too shy to say hi, so I'm saying hi on behalf of Alan. <laughs> Hi, Ellen. How are you? Thank you for being a fan. Thank you, Rochester, for your support. And hopefully soon, Alan, I can get there and visit all of you. Oh, he's already blushing, Alan. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Tamron. We'll Alan, see I'm married. Calm down. Oh, man. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Thanks, Tamron. We'll see you soon.